Kwai Kwai, my name is Dominique Bonswin. The orange shirt has become a symbol of the forced assimilation that many Indigenous children had to endure in the residential school system in North America. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make your very own beaded orange shirt pin. To learn more about the orange shirt, orange shirt day, or the history of the residential school system in Canada and the United States, check out the links in the description below. Let's go through what you need to do this project. First, you need a style of thread. Beading thread is uh, definitely preferred. It is less likely to fray and um, stronger quality than sewing thread. You're also going to need a needle. Beading needles are the best because the eyes are the right size for different sizes of beads. You're also going to need a pin finding. Um, this we're going to attach at the end so that this project is then wearable. Um, a sharp pair of scissors helps uh, a lot so that your thread doesn't fray. And then I am going to be using three different colors of beads um, just so that it's easier to differentiate the different parts of this beadwork. You can use whatever colors you'd like. I'm going to be using three. The orange beads are going to be for the inside of my shirt, the black is going to be for the outline of my shirt, and the blue beads are going to be for the edge, which is how we finish the piece of beadwork. Um, I also have a t-shirt template here, as well as two pieces of felt. The orange felt is going to be my beading foundation, and the black felt is going to be my backing, which we are going to attach this finding to, um, to protect the back of our beadwork. I also have this really soft material here. This is called a beading mat, um, and it helps so that the beads don't roll around. So the first thing we're going to do is tack our template onto the beading foundation. So what you're going to need is your template, the orange piece of felt, or your beading foundation. If you're using white or another color, that's totally okay too. And you're also going to need your needle that's threaded. So this piece of thread is about the length of my arm, which I find is the perfect length for this part of the beadwork. The first thing we're going to do is make a knot at the end of your thread. You don't need to tie both ends of the thread together, just one of the long ends here. It'll be hard to see the contrast, but I'm going to be making a knot right here. Um, if you know how to make a knot, you can use whatever knot you know how to make. I'm going to be making this style of knot, but this is kind of like a choose your own adventure part of beadwork. Any knot will work as long as it's at the end of the longer piece of your thread. Just like this. So we have one knot on one end and then the other end is just kind of loose. So what we're going to do is we're going to tack this piece onto this piece of felt. So from working from the bottom of the felt up, we're going to pierce the felt and the paper. And then going back down, we're just tacking this corner down. just like this. So we're going to be doing that in all four corners. Okay, so now my piece of paper is tacked in all four corners. I'm going to make a really soft knot in the back just because this isn't going to be a part of my final project. This is just to make sure that the paper isn't moving on the felt. So the way I like to make knots is I like to go under a stitch. So in this case, it's this thread going all the way across. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the felt as well with my needle. I'm going to pass it through but I'm not going to pull it all the way through. So I'm going to pull it until I have a little bit of a loop and then I pass my needle through it twice. And pull. And then you have a little knot. This is the type of knot that I make throughout my beadwork but typically I would do two of these. But just for the sake of tacking, this is totally fine. And then you're good to cut here. I like to leave a little bit of a tail, makes me feel like it's a little bit less risky. 
Um, so I'm also going to be cutting this part of the felt off just so that I can get really close to this section of the beadwork when I need to get there. We're now ready to start doing beadwork and we're going to start with the outline which is why I've taken out just my black beads. What we're going to be doing is called a single needle flat stitch. So once you get the hang of it, it's the same thing over and over again but I'm going to walk you through it. So once again, we have our needle with our thread, and we're going to make a knot on the long end of the thread. If your thread from tagging down is still long enough, you can use it, um, or you can cut yourself a new one. But we're going to be doing this process over and over again. So I'm just going to make my knot. Perfect. So I want to start my piece in one of the easiest spots. So I'm going to start very close to this corner here and I'm going to be working this way. So with my needle, I have a knot on one of my ends. The other end is just hanging out loose. I'm going to poke from underneath the felt to the front and I want my needle to come out exactly where I want my beadwork to start. Sometimes it might take you a few tries to get the right spot. So I want to start right here, and I'm going to pick up four beads, two, three, four. Let those beads fall all the way to your project. I like to use my thumb to kind of place them where I want them. So you want to make sure not to crowd your beads. You want to let them kind of fall naturally where they'd like to go, just like this. So once my four beads are where I'd like them along that line, I'm going to take my needle and poke from the front of the beadwork to the back to tack those four beads in place. From here, from the back to the front, I'm going to poke my needle between the second and third bead. Right there. So there are four beads and my needle is coming out right between that second and third bead. And I'm going to pull this all the way. So as you can see, my thread is kind of coming out of this section here. I'm going to take my needle and pass through just the last two beads. So my thread is now coming out of that last bead. I'm going to go ahead and pick up four beads and do this step over again. One, two, three, oops, four. Letting the beads fall all the way down and they should line up perfectly with the four beads that I had just tacked down. Just like this. So you can see these are loose but I'm using my thumb to kind of place them where I want them. And then I'm poking from the front of my project to the back to tack down those four beads. From the back of my project, I'm going to come between the second and third bead of the ones I've just added. Pulling that through. And then passing through the last two beads. So we're going to be doing these steps over and over again until we do the entire outline of this shirt. The only thing I will mention is when you come to a corner, pass your needle from the front to the back and then come up and start a new line just as you did here. You don't want to have some rounded corners here. And if you feel like only one or two beads or three beads fit, you can do it that way as well. So if you were to add just two beads, you would put your two beads, pass from the front to the back, and then come up between those two beads and pass through that last one. If you're working with three beads, um, you can play it by ear. You can decide where you want to come up. If you're only adding one bead, don't worry about coming back up. Just tack it right down. So I'm going to speed up the video, but you can watch me do this outline.
So as you can see, I've poked my needle down to the bottom and I'm ready to start a new line. I want my line to start down here, so I'm not adding beads that are going to be connected here. So I'm just going to poke my needle at the beginning of where I want my new line to start and keep going from here. So I've gotten to the point of my shirt where I'm about to do the outline for the collar. Instead of four beads at a time, I'm going to pick up two beads at a time and coming through both of those beads just to make sure that I get this nice rounded angle. So I'm ready to start my new line just next to this bead. I'm going to pick up two beads instead of four, but the steps are the same. So I'm going to place them where I want them, poke from the front to the back, and then I'm going to come up between those two beads that I've just added and pass through just the last bead. Two beads. Place them where I wanted. From the front to the back. Coming through those two beads. and then passing through that last one. I'm gonna keep doing that until I get to the top here where I'll keep doing four beads at a time. So I just realized my thread's getting quite short, so I'm gonna tie it off and start a new one. So I'm just making sure that everything here is nice and secure, and this is how I tie off a knot. So just like we did earlier, I'm going to find the nearest stitch and I'm going to go under that stitch as well as pick up a little bit of the felt. So you might be able to see with my needle that it's passing under that previous stitch and a bit of the felt. I'm also making sure that I'm keeping this tight so that my beads don't get loose. So I'm passing my needle under that stitch but not pulling it all the way. I want to leave a little bit of a loop with the thread. And then I'm passing through that loop twice. One, two, pulling into that little knot there. I'm going to do that one more time, but in a different direction. So under the knot I just made, I'm passing my needle through, picking up a bit of the felt as well. Pulling it, but not all the way. And then passing through the loop twice. Pulling it to make a nice knot making sure it's nice and tight, and then I can go ahead and cut. So at this point, I'm going to take a new thread and just pick up exactly where I left off. So now that I've finished my outline, I'm going to tie a knot in the back and cut my thread so that we can start filling. If your outline looks a little bit like mine or is a bit wonkier, don't worry, when we put the orange beads inside, it'll kind of make it swell and it'll look, make it look a lot cleaner. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that knot. So going under a stitch, picking up a bit of the felt, pulling but not all the way through, and then passing my needle through this loop twice. Pulling, making a knot. I'm going to do that one more time, put it in another direction. And cutting. So at this point, we can now rip out all of the paper on our project so that we can see that orange felt through our beads. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut the corners that we tacked down at the beginning. And 
and pull out all of this paper. When you're pulling the paper near the beads, I like to hold my beads just so that they don't get pulled in different directions. Okay, so now we've pulled all of the paper out from our um, template. We have our outline ready to go. We're now ready to start filling in the t-shirt. So we're going to be doing the exact same thing we did for our outline with picking up four beads, passing the needle down from the front to the back, coming back up between the second and third bead, and then passing through the last two beads to be able to continue beading. The fun thing about this style of design is that we're trying to fill this entire section here. So you can do it however you'd like. You can follow the outline and make it smaller and smaller and smaller. You can do um, lines in a certain direction. You can freestyle. You can do it however you'd like. I'm going to be doing um, vertical lines, but I'm going to want to start by doing a line in the middle of my t-shirt. So I'm actually just going to use a pencil and kind of roughly draw out the center line. This is optional. This is just what I like to do. So I have my needle and my thread ready to go. There's already a knot on the long end of my thread and I'm ready to start filling my t-shirt. So from the bottom near my outline, pulling my thread until that knot catches and I'm doing the exact same thing we did for the outline. I'm picking up four beads, placing them where I want them, poking from the front to the back, coming through between that second and third bead, like so, and then passing through the last two beads to be in a position to be able to add more beads. So you might be able to notice that it's a little bit harder to see the difference because we're now beading orange beads on the orange background. Um, but this is a good thing because it means if there are any gaps in our beadwork, you're not going to be able to see it as easily as if this was a different color. So we're just going to go ahead and keep filling with this technique. So I'm doing the line in the middle and then I'm going to start filling moving away from the line. Um, this will just make the center of the beadwork a lot cleaner. That way if I have to squish in um, any extra beads to fill in a small gap, it won't be in the middle of my project. All right, friendly reminder, if you don't have room to put four beads, just like I am here. Oh, let's wait for this to focus. As you can see, I only have room for about two more beads because I don't want to crowd it. If I put a third one, it would be way too crowded. So I'm actually going to drop the beads that I had on my thread and do with these two beads what I would do if I had four. So I'm placing them where I want them, poking the needle from the front to the back, and then just passing through the two of them in between, and then back through that first bead. And since this is the end of my line, I'm tacking it down and then I get to decide where I want to come up to start my new line. So I'm going to come up right here. So when you're filling, 
focus on doing the main part of the beadwork and you can always come in and add beads where there are gaps. So since I want to do a straight line, I'm not worried about getting very, very close to this top bead here. I just want to follow along this line. So I'm starting my new line the same way as I would any other line. One of the rules that I like to follow uh, when I'm doing my fill is that I'm going to end my thread when it's getting a little bit too short or if I'm really proud of a section that I just did. So um, if I were to say, oh wow, this is some of the nicest beadwork I ever did, I would tie it off the same way I did for every other line and then start a new, um, a new thread. This protects this part of the beadwork so that if I were to make a mistake later on, I wouldn't have to undo the part that I really like. My other rule is that my thread is considered too short for me if it is shorter than the length from my wrist to the tip of my middle finger. So if my thread is almost this length, I'm going to tie a knot and cut it off there and start a new one because I really don't like to work with a really short thread. I find I make more mistakes when I work with a short thread. Um, I'm going to go keep filling this off camera, um, but just so you know, it's the same pattern over and over and over again until your t-shirt is completely filled. So you may have noticed that I snuck in a little gold bead here. That's my spirit bead and I put it there to remind myself to stay humble and to embrace imperfection. Now that we have the outline and the fill done, we're going to go ahead and cut around. Typically, I try to cut as close as possible to the beads without cutting any of my stitches in the back. But since we're working on an orange shirt pin, I'm going to leave a little bit of a border because I actually want to show a little bit of the felt. Just like this. So as you can see, I left a lot of space around my stitches. If you're cutting close to your beads, you just want to be mindful of the threads passing here. You definitely don't want to cut them um, because then your beads would come undone. But this is what mine looks like after it's been cut. I'm now going to take the piece of backing, which in this case is a black piece of stiff felt, and I'm going to cut out the exact shape of my piece. So I'm just going to line these up. Making sure all of my little threads are tucked in. So I'm lining these up and I'm going to cut out this exact shape. So before we start the edge, we are going to attach our pin finding. So the most important thing to do here is to make sure you're keeping this piece of felt in the right direction. So what I like to do is place the pin approximately where I want it. I think I want it about right there. And then I'm going to take the backing off of the beadwork. So 
So with my needle that has a thread with a knot in it, I'm going to sew on this pin finding. So I'm trying to keep it in place. And I'm going from underneath to inside through these holes here. So I'm going to pass through these holes a few times each to make sure that that pin is nice and snug. So I'm just working my way. I passed through this one three times and I'm gonna do the same thing here. Or twice, two or three times. So you want to make sure you're pulling pretty tight on your thread to make sure that that pin isn't going anywhere. Then finally the last one. You can also glue down this finding if you'd like, but I like to sew them down. So now I'm just going to turn and do the same thing on this edge of the finding. Okay, my pin is not moving. It is sewn on there pretty tight. So from the back, I'm just gonna make sure I'm securing these stitches in really well by doing the same kind of knot we did throughout the beadwork. So going under a stitch, picking up a bit of the felt, pulling but not all the way, and then passing through the loop twice. And this is the second time. Just to be certain, I'm going to do another set of knots just a little bit further out. And then we can cut. So the next step is to finish our piece of beadwork. So we're going to line up the beadwork to the backing the way that we want it. And we're going to do a process that's called an edge, which is putting beads along the edge of your piece and sewing the back and the front together. I'm going to be using some blue beads for this. So 
So when you start your edge, it's better to have a thread that's way too long than too short because it's, you really don't want to have to stop midway through. So I always cut a fresh thread when I am about to do my edge. So we want to set up our thread the same way we would when we're starting a row. So we're making a knot on the long end of our thread. Perfect. So we are ready to start. So to start our edge, I want to start somewhere that's relatively easy, so I'm going to start at a similar spot that I started the outline. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to cut this little piece of thread here, stick it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go between the layers and we're going to poke our needle through the front of the beadwork. So the knot of this new thread is going to be tucked in between the layers. Just like this. So I'm just pulling here to make sure that that knot is catching, but the knot is now wedged between these two layers. So to start the edge, we pick up two beads that are going to be the beads that we use around. So I've picked up two blue beads. And I like to work from the front to the back, but this is definitely a preference. So from the front, I'm going to go about one bead distance away from where my thread is sticking out. I'm going to poke the felt and go through both layers. I'm pulling this all the way through. So you have something that kind of looks like this. I want to go back up through the bead closest to where I'm working right now. And I want to work so that I'm going from the bottom of the bead to the top. I'll show you what that looks like in two seconds. So I want my bead to lay this way. If it will focus. Come on, camera. There we go. So as you can see, the thread is coming out of the top of the bead and it's laying flat along the edge. Don't worry about this first bead. It's going to look a little bit wonky until we finish it. What I'm worried about is this second bead here, the one where the thread is coming out of. So you want it to look like this. So from here, you're going to pick up another bead. You're going to poke one bead distance away from this one through both layers pulling it all the way through. So you can see so you can see ah sorry it's going out of focus. So you can see the thread that was coming out of the top of that second bead we did at the beginning is now connecting the next bead. So I want to go from under this bead to the top. I want to keep this bridge here. So I'm working in the opposite direction. And I'm pulling that all the way until it clicks into place. Just like this. So now I have two beads that are perfectly stacked along the edge. So picking up another bead, working from the front to the back, I'm poking about one bead distance away, going through both layers here, pulling all the way through, and then working from the bottom of the bead, to the top. I'm pulling that until it lays flat on the seam. So we're going to do this process all along this piece of beadwork. Let me zoom in.
one bead distance away through both layers pulling and then going from the bottom of the bead to the top. So you know you're doing it right if your beads have a thread connecting the top of them. So once you get close to where you started, you want to make sure not to crowd a bead. If you put a bead in there that's not going to fit, it's going to look really crooked. It's actually better to leave a bit of a gap. You're less likely to see it. So this was the last bead that I put on my edge. And this was the first one I used on my edge. And I don't have room between the two to add another bead. So this is how you finish your edge. So you make sure that last bead is nice and tight and we're gonna go through this first bead as if it's a new bead. So what you want to do is go from the top of the bead, which is this way, pull your thread all the way through, don't worry about pulling it tight yet, and you're gonna poke your felt one bead distance away from the last bead that you did, this one. So you pull that all the way through And you're now connecting that first bead, which is this one here, to this last bead here. So here we're going to pull and put a bit of tension. And then we're going to go up through the bottom of the bead and pull. So as you can see, there is a bit of a gap here, but it is way better to have a little bit of a gap than to have a cluster of beads. So now we're ready to tie off our final piece. So what I like to do is I like to go back down through the second bead we put in the project. So I'm always working in the same direction, going this way. So I'm going through that bead from the top to the bottom, but I want my needle to come out the back of the piece. just like this. I'm going to pass my needle under the stitch that connects that bead, that edging stitch right here of that same bead I'm coming out of. And I'm pulling but not all the way through, I'm leaving a little bit of a loop and I'm going to do that same kind of knot that we've been doing. So passing through the loop twice. I'm pulling so you do want to make sure it's nice and tight here so that you don't see it too much in your work. I'm now going to pass my needle under a couple of stitches next to it. Pulling all the way. Just to kind of tuck that knot in. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the next stitch. Just pass under that thread. Pull but not all the way and then pass through the loop twice. Pull, pull, pull. Perfect. So I'm just making sure everything looks nice and sturdy, nice and flat. So from here, what I like to do is poke my needle between the layers 
of the beadwork and the backing felt very close to the knot we just tied. So I'm just poking it through the layers and I'm feeding my needle up the piece between the layers and I'm gonna poke it out around right here. I'm pulling all the way. So these knots are really getting tucked in here. So pulling, but don't pull too tight, just to pull that knot in a little bit. And then I grab my scissors and cut as close to the felt as possible. There you have it. You've made your very own orange shirt pin. I hope you learned something in this video. Have a great rest of your day. See you later.